Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to look at how to solve variation problems. So there are many types of variation problems. We're going to solve direct variation, inverse variation, combined variation, and also joint variation problems in this section. So there are certain formulas that occur so frequently in applied situations they are given special names. So variation formulas happen quite often. Two quantities that are related to one another are called variation equations. So quantities can be directly related to each other or vary directly. They can vary inversely to one another or jointly to each other. So in this video we're going to look at how do you solve variation problems and how to set up the equations involved variation. So direct variation. So what is direct variation? It's a relationship between two variables where one variable is a constant multiple of the other variable. That's what it means by direct variation. So in particular, one variable changes, the other variable also changes, and this is the key part, in proportion to the first variable. So the definition of direct variation, it's a situation where an equation of the form y equals k times x is called the direct variation equation. And k is a non-zero constant. So if y and x are related by taking x times this number k, then we say that y varies directly as x, or y is directly proportional to x. y is directly proportional to x. So as x changes, then so does y. k is called the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. So here's an example of direct variation. Suppose that you're paid $20 per hour, then how much you earn is proportional to the number of hours that you work. So if you work two hours, then you are paid two times $20 per hour, so $40. If you work three hours, then you are paid three hours, $20 an hour, so you're paid $60. So notice as the hours increase, then so does the amount of money that you earn. So this is called a direct variation between the amount of money earned and the number of hours worked. So let's come up with an equation that describes this type of variation. Earnings, let's use y to represent it. It looks like y is the hourly wage that always occurred in our calculations. That's $20 per hour. Times the number of hours worked. Well, the number of hours worked is changing. It's not like 20. 20 was constant from our first calculation to the second calculation. The number of hours worked is changing. It needs to be a variable. So let's call that x. So notice that y equals 20 times x, and this is called a direct variation equation. And 20, in terms of the definition for direct variation, the 20 is the constant of proportionality. So $20 per hour is k and that is the constant of proportionality, or let's just say variation, constant of variation. So this type of equation should be familiar. It's a linear equation, and what's the relationship between a direct variation equation, y equals k times x, and the special case of a linear equation y equals mx plus b. So what's the relationship that you notice between those two equations? It looks like they both have y 
solved for and isolated. It looks like the number, the coefficient for x is also the coefficient for x for the direct variation equation. So the constant of variation is the slope. for a direct variation equation. So m equals k. And then the other thing is, notice that the direct variation equation has no constant term, like a typical linear equation in slope-intercept form. So the y-intercept is zero. So that means b equals 0 for direct variation problems. Alright, so no matter what type of variation problem that we have, direct variation or as we get to inverse variation or even joint variation, they are all solved using the same steps or the same procedure. So this procedure applies to any type of variation problems. So the first step will always be write an equation that models the given English statement. So in the word problem there will be some key words that will say varies directly or varies inversely or varies jointly. So that tells you what type of variation that you are dealing with in the problem. So there's either direct, inverse, or joint variation. Once we know what type of variation problem we have, substitute in a given pair of values. Notice that in the last um, equation for direct variation, there were y equals k times x. The y is the variable and x is the variable. So replace the value of y when you have a corresponding value of x in the equation. So substitute. Once you have the value substituted into the equation, then you can solve the equation for k, which will tell you what is the constant of variation that relates x with y, the two variables. Once you have the value of k, substitute it back into the equation from the first step, and then you can start to use the equation to solve any problem that you want that involves the two variables. So use the equation to answer any question from the problem that relates with variation. So let's set up example one. The number of gallons of water, and there are, they're telling us the variables w, so don't, do not use y or x, used when taking a shower varies directly, there's the key words, as the time t. So they're telling us the variables also t. And the time is in minutes in the shower. So let's write out what that first step would be. Write the equation for this type of variation. W, for the amount of water used, varies directly. So it's K times T. So that's the first step. We know it's direct variation because it says the keywords the water used varies directly as the time in the shower. So now the second step. We need to find out what is the value of k using information about water used and the time. So let's keep reading. A shower lasting five minutes uses 30 gallons of water. So there's the information that we need. 30 is the amount of water when the time is five minutes. So this is an equation where we can solve for k by dividing by five. So it looks like k is equal to six. And this is called the constant of variation. So this tells us what so this tells us how 
W and T are related. So that's the second step. We found out what K was. So now the third step. Substitute the value of K back into the equation. So the direct variation equation becomes W equals 6 times T. So now the last step. Use this equation from step 3 to answer the question. So the last sentence says how much water is used in the shower, so find W, when the shower is 11 minutes. So if the shower is 11 minutes, then that means W equals 6 times 11, or 66, and always include units with application problems. So 66 gallons of water. And we've solved the variation problem. All right, so before we do the next type of variation, there's one thing to notice about what does the equation for direct variation tell us about um, the graph of the function. The direct variation equation, y equals kx, we definitely know it's a linear function because the, the degree is 1. If k is positive, we know that the slope is representing k. So if k is positive, then the slope of the line is positive. And that means if x increases, then y also increases between the relationship between y and x. On the other hand, if the slope is negative, then that tells us that as x increases, y decreases. So don't just assume that direct variation means if x increases, y increases. If x decreases, y decreases. It's not that type of relationship. If x increases from left to right, then your graph can either go up, that means your y values increase, or your graph falls from left to right and the y values decrease. All right, so now we're going to talk about how do you deal with direct variation when you have variables raised to powers. So you can have direct variation in terms of square of a variable or the cube of a variable, and you will come up with power functions. So this is a type of variation with powers. y varies directly as the nth power of x. So that means there is some number k called the constant of variation where y equals k times x to the n power. So notice that this is still direct variation, so it's k times the variable x, but x is not just to the first power now, it's to the nth power, nth power of x. If this is the case, then we say y is directly proportional to the nth power of x. So here's an example in involving direct variation with powers of x. Suppose that the distance of a falling body from rest varies directly, there's the key words again, but the distance varies directly as the square of the time. So let's start with the equation for direct variation. Again, do not use y and x. We have variables s and t. So s varies directly, so k times the variable t, but it's not just t, it's the square of the time, so t squared. If the skydivers fall 64 feet in 2 seconds, so that's information about time and distance, so let's use that information to find k. If the distance is 64 feet, in 2 seconds, then we have 64 equals k times 2 squared. And we can simplify to get 64 equals 4 times k, and that tells us that k equals 16.
by dividing by both sides by 4. So 16 is the constant of variation for this problem. Alright, so we did the first two steps in the variation problem. The third step is always go back to the equation and replace the k with the constant of variation that we found. So 16 t squared is s. And now we can use the equation to solve any related problem. How far did the skydivers fall in 4.5 seconds? So they're telling us time. So if the time is 4.5 seconds, then the distance, s, would be 16 times 4.5 squared. And this turns out to be 324 feet. Make sure we have units on the distance. So in 4.5 seconds, the skydivers will have fallen 324 feet. All right, so now let's look at inverse variation. So inverse variation is a relationship between two variables, again. But this type of relationship is where the product is a constant. So what that means is as one variable increases, the other variable decreases in proportion so that the product is never changed. So that when one value decreases at the same rate that the other variable increases. So inverse variation has its own equation relating the two variables. If the equation is y equals k divided by x, this is called the inverse variation equation. Now how do you know if it's going to be inverse variation versus direct variation? The only difference is instead of k times x for direct variation, it's k divided by x. k is still a non-zero constant, but how do you know the difference? It will give you information about how the two variables are related. y varies inversely as x. Or it could say y is inversely proportional to x. But the key word is the two variables are related inversely. And k is still called the constant of variation, just like before. So some examples of inverse variation. Speed and travel time are inversely proportional because the faster that you travel, the shorter the time it will take. So as one increases, so if, you, if your speed increases, your travel time decreases, and they are inversely proportional. Or if your speed decreases, your travel time increases. Here's another example of how you have inverse variation involving two variables. Suppose that a length of a violin string varies inversely as the frequency of the vibrations. So notice that they don't tell us variables in the problem, so let's denote the frequency is changing and the length of the violin string. Let's use L to represent the length of the violin string. And this will be in inches. And let's use F for frequency. Frequency of the vibrations. And this will be measured in cycles per second. Okay, so now it's right what the equation would be involving L and F. The length varies inversely. So L equals K divided by the frequency of the vibrations. So length equals K divided by F. This is the inverse variation equation and the first step in the procedure. Now let's keep reading. Suppose that a violin string 8 inches long vibrates at a frequency of 640 cycles per second. 
So they're telling us the length is 8 inches when the frequency is 640. So solve for k by multiplying both sides of this equation by 640, which is the least common denominator. And you'll find out that k is equal to 5,120. And that is the constant of variation. for this problem. So go back to the equation and replace k with 5120. Length is related to frequency by taking 5120 and dividing by the frequency f. And then let's answer the question, what is the frequency of a 10 inch string? So they're telling us the L is 10. So now solve for f. So notice that f is in the denominator, so multiply both sides by f, which is the LCD this time. That will remove f from the denominator, and we'll have 10 times f is equal to 5120, and then divide by 10, 512. 512 cycles per second. So notice that we took the violin string from 8 inches to 10 inches, so the violin string increased in length, and the frequency was 640 cycles per second, and it decreased to 512. And it was decreasing inversely. All right, last problem. For the last type of variation, we have what's called joint variation. So what is it? Joint variation is a type of variation where a variable varies directly as the product of two or more variables. So joint variation equation can look like this. Y equals K times X times Z. And you would read this as Y varies directly as X and Z. Let's try a problem involving joint variation. They work the same way as the last few examples. Example four, the volume of a cone, V, varies jointly as the height and the square of the radius. So we have volume of a cone, height, and square of the radius. So let's write down what the equation would be for the joint variation. Volume is K times height times square of the radius. So radius squared. Now they already told us the variables are V, H, and R. A cone is a cone with a radius 6 feet and a height of 10 feet has a volume of 120 pi cubic feet. So this is information we can find K. Volume is 120 pi equals K times height, which is 10 feet, times the radius, which is also 6 feet. Make sure that the units involving radius and height are the same. Otherwise, you'll need to do a conversion to get them to be the same units. So now we can find out what the value of K is. So take, simplify the right side first. So the right side of the equation is 360K. Divide both sides by 360. And so K will be 120 pi divided by 360, which reduces to pi divided by 3. 120 goes into 363 times. So we have the constant of variation so we know how ver the volume, the radius, and the height are related to each other. It's by a constant multiple of pi over 3. 
So go back to the equation and replace the k with pi divided by 3 times height times radius squared. And now find the volume of a cone where the radius is 12 feet and the height is 2 feet. Again, make sure that these are in the same units. So volume is pi divided by 3, height is 2 feet, and the radius is 12 feet, and the radius is squared. If you simplify and, and approximate to two decimal places, it's 301 and 59 hundredths feet cubed. Volume is always cubic units. So this finishes up the video on variation, direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. If you have any questions about any of the types of variation, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section on variation, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video.